What's going on everyone? Gourmet here. Today I am bringing you guys the second variation of my hello there tactic aka the goal machine 2.0 is basically what this is. Now I have changed a few of the player roles and let me tell you I, I believe that this version is even better than the first version. Uh, I went way more in depth with this one kind of just left the old one as it was and it's still absolutely dominated but this one is one that you can use at any level and it is absolutely phenomenal so i'll be bringing that to you guys today now before we do get in to today's video please feel free to leave a like comment and subscribe i will be linking the tactic in the discord that is linked down below so make sure to check that out if you guys would like to download this tactic and join an amazing community over there on the discord but yeah without further ado Let's get into the video. All right, so here we are, the Hello There 2.0. Now, we've got an advanced forward up top. We put shoot more often on the advanced forward. With both inside forwards, we have the crosses aimed at center and shoot more often on both inside forwards because when they cut inside it basically ends up being a front three and then we have got the advanced playmaker who has get further forward and move into channels on him we have got the deep line playmaker who dribbles less and tackles harder he is on defend a ball winning midfielder on defend all that we added to him was tackle harder then we have got two complete wing backs on support on both of them, we have got cross more often, crosses aimed at center. Then for the mark specific position, the left wing back, the left complete wing back, he marks the right winger. The right complete wing back marks the left winger of the opposing team. They are very, very good at doing their job when that is on. And then the central defenders, both of them tackle harder. Then the sweeper keeper was left as is now we played with a positive mentality played fairly wide passed into space overlap on the left and the right because it ends up being an attacking six it's very very potent and then you've got play out of defense we work the ball into the box with mixed crosses we dribble less have a slightly lower tempo and standard passing directness now in transition we have got counter press counter and we distribute to the defense aka our wing backs and our center backs and then when we're out of possession we have a higher line of engagement for the offense a higher defensive line we have more urgent pressing intensity which you can definitely get away with extremely urgent as well and then prevent short goalkeeper distribution and then of course with our set pieces we've got the elite corner set piece tactics and elite set piece tactics in general that will be linked to this tactic when you download it and i will also be putting it in the discord as well if you guys would like to have them just to use with any save that you guys do so getting into things we tested this with three different teams one was in italy one was in france one was in england all top top teams in their leagues but like i said earlier you can use it with any level of team because i was using it with my rexham save it's very very good uh, no matter what level you are at because your team will perform to its best ability in this tactic and it is a very very good one but in the Serie A Inter won the league they got knocked out in the semi-final of the Champions League by Liverpool which Liverpool had a phenomenal year I will show you guys that um, in a moment but we also got knocked out in the semi-final of the Italian Cup by Juventus but we won the league so we will definitely definitely take that now getting in to the team overview we had the most goals in the league with 88 most shots for we were in we were in third with 552 we were in few shots against as well we were in fourth with 306 and you guys will notice this is a solid defensive tactic as well it's just when it comes to most tackles one it's not the greatest except for the team that was in england they really really showed out defensively with it uh but enter and the team in france were very very focused offensively and did a great job at it now, best pass completion wise, we are in sixth with 88%. Most possession in second with 55%. Just under first, which was Atalanta with 56%. Like I said, most tackles won. We were not in the top eight. 
most dribbles made were also not in the top eight because they were very direct with their passing. Uh, they they didn't really try and get too fancy with it, whereas the team in France definitely got fancy with it. Uh, but most shutouts, we were in first with 17 and fewest conceded. We only let in 26 goals during the season in the league, so that's absolutely phenomenal. Now, most goals for us in the league was Romelu Lukaku. He had 22 goals. Most assists, Marcelo Brazovic had 12. Atraf Hakimi had 9. Most shots, Romelu Lukaku had the second most shots in the league right behind Ronaldo. Most player of the match performances, Romelu Lukaku was in a three-way tie in sixth. He had five of them. Most key passes, we were not in. Like I said, they kind of played a little bit more direct with this tactic, but with the other teams, key passes, definitely, definitely a big thing. Best pass completion, though. We did not mess around. We had three players in best pass completion. Milan Skriniar had 97%, same with Stefan DeVridge. And then Alessandro Bastoni had 96%. So we do not mess about with our passing. Most tackles won, we were not in. Most dribbles made, we were not in. Most shutouts, however, Samir Handanovic had the most shutouts with 17. And fewest conceded. He had 20 goals conceded on the season. Finished in second right behind Thomas Strakosha, who is also a very, very solid goalkeeper. But looking at the squad overall, goal-wise, Romelu Lukaku on the year had 30 goals. Ivan Perisic had 17. Lautaro Martinez played as the advanced playmaker in this tactic because Martinez and Lukaku, both very, very good strikers. But I played Lautaro Martinez as an advanced playmaker. I trained him to be one. He was absolutely phenomenal as it as he had 14 goals in that role. Arturo Vidal had 10. Then Milan Skriniar had 7. Alexis Sanchez and Christian Eriksen both with 6. Stefano Sensi with 5. Atra Fakini with 4. And a bunch of other players with some key contributions as well. Now, let's get into the assists. There we go. Marcelo Brazovic had 14. Love seeing that. Atraf Hakimi with 13. Kolarov with 11. So that left back had 11. The right back, which is Hakimi, had 13. So they are major, major impact players. And coming up when it becomes an attacking six, it, it's very, very lethal. Uh, now, Nicole Barella had eight. Perisic had eight. Christian Eriksen and Lukaku and Ambroso all had seven. Now, Barella played the ball-winning midfielder role, and even though he's playing more defensive, he was still able to contribute assist-wise, which is very, very nice to see. All right, next up, we head to France, where we've got PSG. PSG won the league by 30 points. They had 100 points on the season and did not lose a single game, which is awesome. Unfortunately, they were knocked out in the quarterfinal by Man City, in the Champions League because, I mean, if they went on to have a complete undefeated season, won the Champions League and everything, it would have been absolutely unreal. But still a very, very incredible season by them by not losing a single game in the league. They won the French Cup and they won the Trophy de Champions, so that is very, very good. Now, getting into the team overview, they absolutely blew me away. They had 40 more goals than the next highest scoring team, which was Olympic Lyon. PSG had 107, Olympic Lyon had 67. That's absolutely absurd. Most shots for PSG and first with 643. Fewest shots against 241. So even though they were absolutely lethal up front, they still did not concede that many shots against themselves. And as you can see down here as well, they only had 21 goals against them in the league. So they were still very, very solid in the defense they came in third with best pass completion at 89 percent most possession came in second with 56 percent most tackles won they were not in but like i said previously they they really showed out in the dribbles made category they had 132 they are very very good team when it comes to dribbling now most shutouts they had 20 and then like i said fewest conceded they only let in 21 goals which is absolutely phenomenal now most goals in the league Mario Icardi had 30, Kylian Mbappe with 22, most assists, Angel Di Maria had 15, Neymar with 13, most shots, Kylian Mbappe was in there with 95, so on 95 shots, 
in the league. He had 22 goals. Definitely will take that. Most player of the match performances coming in Mbappe with 7, Neymar with 6. Most key passes, Neymar with 121. Absolutely phenomenal. Best pass completion, Marquinhos and Presidio Kimpembe, both of our center backs finishing 1 and 2. Love seeing that. They were not messing about with their passes. Tackle-wise, we were not in. Most triples made. However, Kylian Mbappe had 30 of our many, many dribbles completed. Most shutouts, Kaylor Navas went 19, and few has conceded. He only conceded 18 goals. So, I mean, th this tactic really, really showing out currently. And then as we get in to the team, Mario Icardi had 36 goals on the year. He started 33 games, came in as a sub for 14, had 36 goals in that time. Kylian Mbappe started 36 games because he does start it injured. He had 26 goals and 7 assists. Very, very good. Neymar had 21 goals, 19 assists. And El Di Maria with 11 goals, 21 assists. Moise Keane with 9 goals and 3 assists. Presno Kempembe, 8 and 3. Rafinha, 5 and 6. Pablo Sarabia, 5 and 9. And Marquinhos, 5 and 1. So, I mean... You, you get goal contributions from everywhere. Definitely, definitely the attacking front four. Uh, they, they're very, very good at what they do, as you guys can clearly see, as they all had double-digit goals. I mean, Moise Keane almost even had double-digit double goals. He only started eight games, came on for 26. Uh, so very, very solid showing from PSG and a solid showing from Inter. But let's get into the last team that we tested it with. All right, so here we are with Manchester United. They're the only team that did not win a trophy. Sucks that they didn't win a trophy, but they did absolutely phenomenal still when you look at it statistically. So Man U finished second to Liverpool. Liverpool had a phenomenal year. They won the Champions League because we were runners up in the Champions League. Uh, so Liverpool had a phenomenal year. There really wasn't just a team that could touch them. Uh, Man U got very, very close to overcoming them though but still finished in second but we got knocked out by Leicester in the FA Cup and knocked out in the quarterfinal by Arsenal in the Carabao Cup because apparently they are gods in FM and are absolutely atrocious in reality but I mean Man U overall had a very very good season uh, and I mean getting into the stats we finished second goal wise had 87 goals in the league most shots for, we were in 5th with 547. Few shots against, we were in 4th with 326. Best pass completion, we were in 6th with 87%. Possession in 7th with 53%. Tackles won, we had 859, we were in 7th. So defensively, we were a better team than Liverpool, even though Liverpool only conceded 19. We only conceded 34. Yes, big difference, but... We showed out in every single category because we were in every single category with Man U. We had 135 dribbles made. Most shutouts, we had 18. And then fewest conceded, like I said, 34. So, I mean, overall, very, very solid performance. It just sucks that Liverpool had one of those years that they were really untouchable. But goal-wise... For individual players, Mason Greenwood had 17 league goals. He was the top scorer for the team, which is absolutely incredible. Most assists, Bruno Fernandez tied in first with Mohamed Salah. They both had 15. Most shots, we did not have anyone in. Most player of the match performances, though, Bruno Fernandez had seven. He was joint second with Mohamed Salah. Most key passes, Bruno Fernandez with 195. So he he's absolutely integral. In this tactic, he played the advanced playmaker position, uh, aka role in this tactic. Uh, he had 195, like I said, next highest was 122. Best pass completion, Harry Maguire at 96%. He's in a five, yeah, five way tie for first. Then most tackles won, Aaron Juan Basaka. He was that complete wing back on the right side. The, the complete wing backs are very, very good. I feel that a lot of people should try and use the complete wingbacks. They can be very offensive, as you guys saw with Enter and with PSG, but also they can be very defensive, like as Aaron Wambasaka has shown us with 169 tackles won. Most dribbles made, we did not have anyone in. Most shutouts, though, David De Gea had 16. 
fewest conceded. David De Gea only let in 26. Uh, so, I mean, overall, very, very good from Man United. Now, goal-wise, Anthony Martial had 30 goals in total. Mason Greenwood with 25. Edison Cavani with 15. Marcus Rashford with 13. Now, they are the front four a majority of the time, uh, as well as Bruno Fernandes, who had nine. But Bruno Fernandes had 25 assists, so that definitely makes up for not hitting the double digits uh, goal-wise, as he had 25 assists, which is incredible. Daniel James had eight goals, though. That's great to see. Eric Bailly with five. Victor Lindelof with four. Harry Maguire with four. So, I mean, and Axel Twanzebi with three. So, they all play as center backs and in the corner set pieces. That's great to see that you have all of your center backs contributing from those. But assist-wise, we've got Bruno Fernandez with 25 assists. Aaron Wan-Bissaka with 11. So, not only did he lead the league in tackles made, but he also had 11 assists, which is very, very solid. Marcus Rashford with 10 assists. Alex Tellez with 9, Paul Pogba with 7, Greenwood, and Daniel James also with 7. You got Brandon Williams with 6, Juan Mata with 5, Lindelof with 4, and Anthony Martial with 4. And then Scott McTominay had 3. He played that ball-winning midfielder role, but, I mean, he, he is a very defensive player. Uh, but, I mean, overall, Man U did very, very good. PSG absolutely killed it. Enter did very, very well as well. So, overall, we got two league champions, one runner-up in the league, and four trophies overall, which I will definitely take. But yeah, now let's see what this looks like in-game.
All right, so that does it for today's tactic. Like I said, these teams were absolutely phenomenal. I mean, with Enter winning the league, PSG going undefeated in the league and adding two more trophies on top of that. And I, I was looking at their schedule. The only game they lost was to Man City, and it was on penalties. That That is the only game that they lost with this tactic. So it it is a tactic that I believe everyone must try out with at least one of their saves. And Man U did very, very well as well. So that they ran into a very dominant Liverpool team there in the Premier League. But yeah, like I said, that does it for today's tactic. But if you guys did happen to enjoy, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I'll be linking it down in the Discord, which is down in the description below. And until next time, have a good one. Bye.